Hello, this is the Spread.js v16 new features webinar. My name is Kevin Ashley, and today I will be going over the great new features that we added in this release and how they can improve your application. I wanted to give you a bit of info about myself. I am the product manager for Spread.js and have been working on the Grape City team for a little over six years now. I graduated from North Carolina State University with a bachelor's degree in computer science and a concentration in game design. In this webinar, I will go over the new features we have added, starting with the new file format. We will move on to the enhancements made to the table sheet and the designer, as well as the calculation engine and the shape enhancements. And finally, we'll end with the enhancements we made to the workbook functionality. One of the most exciting new features that we have added to Spread.js is a new and improved file format. This new file type can greatly improve the performance of importing large Excel files while also creating a smaller, better optimized file when saving. The new .sjs file format works by bypassing the previous need to first export to SSJSON and now translates the data directly to an Excel model. The resulting data is saved to a zipped.sjs file with smaller ssjson files, making it similar to Excel's own XML structure. This format now makes the Excel I.O. process much faster and smaller. This is also supported in the designer, and the ssjson format is still supported should you need it. I'll now show you an example of the file format in our designer. So for right now, I'm just going to import an old ssjson file. And now that's in Spread.js. So now let's say I want to save it. So I can go to File, Save, and save as the new .sjs format. Now, if I check that format, you can see that it's actually only 12 kilobytes compared to the previous 144 kilobytes. So this new file type is much faster and smaller than its original counterpart. Our high performance table sheet data table has received a couple of features in V16. The first is support for hierarchy data in the source for the data manager. This includes four different types of data for records with ID and parent ID properties, properties with hierarchy level or hierarchical children, and a primary key that can be parsed to a hierarchy using a custom function. We have also included hierarchy options, which give users the ability to promote and demote records, move records up or down, insert records after, before, above, or below, delete a record, expand or collapse all or specific records, and sort or filter records. The second feature is support for setting an alias for columns in the data source schema, which allows for different names between the front end and back end of a data source. This can be done by simply setting the caption property when adding a view to the data manager. You can see a hierarchy and a table sheet in the graphic on the right. Each level can be collapsed or expanded to show and hide the appropriate records. We have also made a few designer enhancements, the first being enhancements to the table sheet template and panel. When working with relationship data in a column list, specific columns can now be collapsed to make the data easier to view. In addition, relationship columns can be clicked on to show the details for that specific column. You can also group and drag fields around. Another enhancement to the table sheet implementation in the designer is the addition of support for hierarchical data in the columns tab of the data source. There is a separate hierarchy section with options like type, summary formula, and outline column that you can define. And you can see that in the graphic on the right. And now I'll show you a little bit of what that hierarchy looks like. So here we have a simple table sheet. We have all the fields here 
and you can see right now we are looking at the single view and in this view we actually have a customer object now this one can be added to the sheet and then we can separate it into its hierarchical children so as you can see you can now see those customer IDs and titles and names all in the table sheet and we can simply hide or unhide them whenever we want. The search functionality in the designer has also been enhanced to now allow searching only a specific selection of cells. A new format pane button has also been added to easily open up the existing side panels for shapes, pictures, and charts. So you can see in the graphic right there at the top that you can make specific selections and then search for data within those selections and ignoring anything else. And then on the bottom, you can see the format pane icons to open up those panes for each of those different options. One of the enhancements we made to the calculation engine is regarding invalid formulas. SpreadJS automatically recognizes these formulas and shows an error when a user tries to submit one. However, the formula would also be removed if it was invalid. And with this release, we have enhanced this behavior to keep the formula in the cell, but instead convert it to text if the allow invalid formula option is set to true. So you can see in this graphic here, the average formula was already present in those cells in row 15, but I instead removed some parameters from the average function, rendering it invalid. And because I had the allow invalid formula option set to true, this formula is still displayed as text in the cell. The biggest enhancement we have made to shapes has been the Excel-like form controls. These new controls make it even easier to create your own forms within SpreadJS. And they include buttons, spin buttons, list boxes, combo boxes, check boxes, option buttons, group boxes, labels, and scroll bars. These controls can be placed anywhere in a worksheet by specifying the left, top, width, and height parameters of the add form control method. Once the location and size are set and the control is created, it can be bound to a specific cell. And now I'll show you what that looks like running in SpreadJS. So as you can see, we have a sheet that has a bunch of form controls in here, and you can interact with these, you can change them however you want, um, and all these can be placed wherever you want in the spreadsheet. Uh, and that's the big difference between previous form controls. The other shape enhancements we made are to the resize behavior. Developers can now restrict or allow different types of shape resizing, which includes aspect, horizontal, and vertical resizing. In addition, if the allow resize property is set to true for a sheet, the shift key can be held down while clicking on a shape to resize and retain the aspect ratio. And I'll now show you this running in our demos. So as you can see, we have some shapes here. And if I click on one of these, you can see that I can resize it and it does not retain its aspect ratio. But if I were to instead change the resize mode to aspect, now when I try resizing it, it retains the aspect ratio. And we also have some code here on this demo that lets me use the shift key to have the same effect. So right now you can see I can click and drag this around and it doesn't retain the aspect ratio. But if I instead hold shift while I'm clicking on it, now the resize is set to aspect. The events for copying and cutting have been enhanced to provide the current state of the clipboard. This can help with implementing specific functionality during certain stages of the copy, cut, and paste process, with additional arguments added to the clipboard changing, clipboard pasting, and clipboard pasted events. Our style implementation has also been enhanced to include cell decoration for things like ellipse color, corner fold color, an icon, position, and color. And now you can see that 
in some of our demos. So here we have a demo that has a bunch of corner folds in some of these cells. So you see I can select one of these and I can change where I want it. And you can also change the size and the color. Two other features that we added to the basic workbook functionality are custom styles for data validation, allowing the developer to mark incorrect data or prevent entering of specific data with custom styles, and the cancel parameter for edit ending and edit ended events, which lets the developer cancel the edit during those events if needed. So you can see in this graphic on the right, we have a bunch of cells that are marked as invalid. But in this case, we have applied some custom styles. For example, in the category column, you can see that one cell has a yellow border around it with a yellow X next to it. This is a custom style that can only be possible with the latest release. That concludes the Spread.js v16 new features webinar. If you have any questions or feedback on this webinar, please submit them to my email, which is provided here. If you have any sort of feature or component requests, please submit those using our support portal. If you haven't already, you can download a trial of Spread.js at www.grapecity.com slash spreadjs slash download. Thank you for viewing this webinar and have a great day.